We're uh, right on the beach. We're about five minutes away from uh, the restaurant, Bohemian. Uh, and the best time to go looking for, for herbs for us and to forage is really sort of in the afternoon. Normally we'd be out with the dogs and I suppose it's just sort of being out with the dogs and being aware of your environment, you start realising that there are these wild foods around that perhaps you can use, you can find, you can try and do something with. We've got here some of the wild herbs and foraged uh, vegetables that we use here at Bohemia. We've got two types of scurvy grass, uh, some really nice wild garlic, a little bit of stone crop, uh, some Alexander leaves, and then we've got two types of uh, sorrel. Uh, we use these as a way of adding a little bit of flavour, something that's a little bit different and a different way of adding perhaps a traditional flavour to a dish that you would recognise and that you would be quite uh, open with, but it's just put onto the dishes in a slightly different way. For somebody that's just sort of starting to go out and look for wild foods, you want to probably stick with things like uh, wild sorrel. Uh, it's fairly readily available. You can see it in most, most places you'll find sorrel. You'll see wild garlic all over the place at this moment in time as we start going into early spring. You can't miss it and it's such a good uh, wild herb to be using and getting into. You tend to see it in massive banks and on, uh, on hillsides, generally covered, generally under uh, quite a lot of uh, tree cover. But you can't really miss it because of the smell and the aroma that you get from it. I mean, if you're unsure whether or not it's wild garlic and you're not too sure, the best thing to do is just tear the leaves and have a good smell. It'll just give you a hit of grassy garlic. And if you think, yeah, that might be garlic, there's nothing wrong with trying a small amount. You'll know straight away if it isn't, and if it isn't, get rid of it. If you are going out and you're sort of looking for stuff, I don't recommend that you just pick up anything that you come across. There's a really good book uh, by Miles Irving that's called The Forager's Handbook and use it as a source of reference or use it to refer to so that you can start understanding what is out there and what is around. So I think once you actually start realising that there are bits and pieces that you can use, you might start finding this stuff in your back garden. And it's not about having to go far and to sort of spend masses of time. You just might become aware of it just from just looking for it and just being more aware of where you are best way to keep it is to keep it damp, keep it under a maybe just a damp newspaper and keep it in the fridge. You can keep it submerged in water but it doesn't really do it a great deal of good and I'd recommend that you just thoroughly wash it in cold water just before you're about to use it rather than washing it and keeping it. But it's great to put through butter uh, to make uh, seaweed butters and it's fantastic just to finish in soups if you want that hit of natural sea. I've uh, got some Jerusalem artichokes, some morels, a few different cuts of, uh, of lamb and I'm just going to add the final touches to this which is basically the, the wild garlic uh, that we spoke about earlier on. And I'm just going to twist it over, I mean garlic and lamb is a, is a flavour combination that's been done for years and it's absolutely brilliant but this is just our take on it but it's also a way of just adding that garlic flavour but adding just a wonderful bit of vibrancy and a bit of colour uh, to the lamb dish. 